In this section I'll show you how to do compositing from those two cameras that we render from 3D Studio Max and saved as OpenEXR files. So I already created a very simple compositing pass in uh, Digital Fusion, actually it's only Fusion now. There used to be free version of Fusion for some time, so I'm using version 9.0 I think and it's good you can composite all the images up to 4k resolution after that if you want to do compositing for 8k images you need to purchase the full version so what i did in fusion is i brought the uh, uh, first camera so this is exr file and it's saved as a linear exr file which means that once you load it into fusion so let's say if i put a loader and you're gonna find loader over here uh, LD so if I just click on that and drag it then I can find that render first one cam01 and if I drag and drop it then it will be basically in this viewport so let's say um, I go back to that loader click on it drag it up and then that will be in the viewport so after that if I want to see it as sRGB file I'll go to tools transform actually not transform it should be in uh, color and color space and it should be transformed from linear color space to sRGB color space and then when I drag and drop this one over here then you should see exactly what uh, I render we rendered in 3D Studio Max So this is that linear image and then transformed into our sRGB. I changed the depth over here so until this point over here everything was calculated in 16-bit uh, float depth and in order to ensure that all your compositing was is do done in uh, floating point you can go to preferences file preferences and then global settings and under frame format you can set this to 16-bit float per channel if you're looking for some ultra precision maybe you can use a 32-bit but I found that 16-bit is more than enough for a majority of the compositing work that I do so by default I think the infusion this is set to 8-bit and that's something that you should switch to a 16-bit uh, per float so this is for global settings and for this composite I can check frame format and this one is already set to 16-bit uh, float so that's fine so this version is basically a beauty pass that goes into that linear to sRGB conversion and then I'm changing depth to be 16-bit uh, so over here before I save the image I'm converting that floating point image into 16-bit and then I just do a little bit of sharpening which I'm not sure if you can see in this recording so if I click on that sharpen and I can, if I increase the amount you're gonna see that's too much so I just use a little bit and then I use a little bit of soft glow so before and after so if I click on soft glow then I can control the gain over here and I just use it a little bit so it gives that additional kind of like a gl uh, glare uh, to the final image and this is my saver so next to the loader icon you can find saver icon so if i click and drag and drop it over here i can save it as something let's say a final comp .tga and then if i click on that box and connect it to our input of a saver then that will be automatically saved as that image when i calculate when I render the whole uh, complex time. So if I want to render that as final TGA image, 
I'll just click on render and then I click start render and then at that will output that uh, TGA. Okay, <laughs> so this one is just using that uh, EXR render of the first camera, beauty pass, and this second composite over here is using is producing exactly the same image, but it's using all those AOV passes that we set up for every light. So basically, this one is uh, you can see like that's the other, which means that's that's all the, that reminder after all the uh, light groups are set up and rendered. So this is a sky light group, that's a volume top, that's fog mid, top fill, left A, left forward. For some reason I don't see anything over here, but maybe that's because the light was turned off in, in that final render. And this is right fill, and this is right rim. So what this allows me to do is, uh, let's say I have that uh, uh, previous flow, composite flow, and because there is only beauty pass, what I can do is click on that CC, which is color corrector, put it somewhere over here. So let's put it after that conversion. And then I can start doing some color corrections on that image, but the the thing is I don't have like a lot of flexibility so I can because I, I can only do color corrections on that beauty pass. <laughs> so what this allows me to do is I can do color corrections so let's just drag and drop that into viewport. I can turn and off these like light groups if the, I don't need like one of them I can just turn them on or off. So let's say this one I can turn off, or maybe like if if uh, this light group, if I want to increase it, its intensity, I can just uh, put a color correction in between uh, that uh, merge node and uh, light group node. And then with that color correction, I can go to gain and I can increase gain by two times and that's going to increase that intensity of that light. And let's say I can do the same thing uh, for uh, that volume light, so I can turn it on, off. And let's say I want it on in this case and then I can drag and drop that color correction. And I can increase maybe like gamma a little bit so it's uh, stronger and I can tint it towards something else, let's say uh, purple and maybe I can, I can increase hue a little bit, actually not hue but saturation, yeah something like that. And then sky, let's turn it off and on and maybe I can take another color correction and then decrease the intensity of the sky and that's it. So basically after tweaking all these uh, uh, light group passes I get basically a completely different image than the one that we have in a beauty pass. So by using like this uh, way of compositing it gives me like huge flexibility like when I do uh, color corrections later so I can experiment by turning on and off some light groups or color correcting light groups or making them stronger or dimmer and so what I did basically in this case I have a couple of these uh, uh, comps so that's the first one that's the one that we were just uh, playing with and then that's the another version that I did and then I did a second version which is a little bit more green, stronger fog and that's the same version but uh, with a little bit different color correction and that's also another version with, where it's uh, missing that the background fog and I turned off uh, uh, many uh, lights so it's not as bright as that original beauty pass. 
So the way to set up all these uh, final comps. So let's do that for the second camera. So what I'll do, I'll just copy this whole that part of the comp and I'll paste it over here. Okay. And then I'll delete these color corrections for now. I'll bring everything back so it's the same as the original beauty pass and then like what I can do now I already have the whole setup for the first camera so what I'll do is I click on the uh, first loader and then I'll just change the name over here to camera 02 and then I'll start changing names one by one for every loader and that's gonna switch those loaders to that second EXR for the uh, second uh, camera and so this one and two more that one and this one over here and when I drag and drop that beauty pass then you should basically see the final render for the uh, that second camera and then over here basically I can start turning on and off some passes that I need or don't need so the way to set up like those uh, nodes uh, what I did is I brought one uh, loader I selected the uh, EXR and then by default it will bring that uh, let's just copy that uh, conversion from linear to sRGB and then connect that EXR to that node so that will bring the uh, final beauty pass and then what I'll do at this point is go to format channels and as red green brew like everything is plugged in as rgb which is final beauty pass and then what i'll do is uh go to format and then for r i'll select uh, view the other r and then i'll select view the other g and then view the other b and then I'll copy that loader, paste it over here. I'll put a merge node to blend these two loaders together. And then I'll connect this second one to that green arrow. I'll click on that merge, bring that alpha gain to zero. I'll click back on that uh, second loader. Go into that format and then select let's say L top volume R, L top volume G, L top volume B. So that's basically that light in the background and then let's copy these nodes, paste it and then shift, hold shift and bring, click over here. So that's for, that will paste it directly into that flow. And let's say I actually switch that loader to something else. So let's find sky R I G and sky B. So R G B. Let's see that over here. So that's sky pass, and then we are merging on top of that these other passes. So this is that uh, reminder pass and this one is uh, top volume and that's a sky pass and then what I did I just like continue adding all these passes so one by one copy paste that and then format and then I select all these as you can see that that's the complete list of those separate AOVs for every single light 
Okay, so right now I'll just uh, delete that. And let's play with that uh, second camera <coughs> compositing. Uh, let's see if I can I can leave this for now. And let's see if I can uh, do something with these passes, light groups. So for example, this one over here, maybe we need to Let's turn them on by one by one. So this one we need. And let's put the color correction over here. Let's try to find... It could be interesting if we push it a little bit more towards blue. Okay, let's leave it like that. And... I can just increase gamma a little bit. So Control P is uh, to turn to do a, a pass through. So if I select these nodes and if I click Control P, then it will not ignore them. It will calculate them. So which means that it will merge every single pass with the previous one. But I can select all of them and click Control P, and that will like basically uh, ignore these ones that I selected. So it will not calculate them. And then I can select them one by one and start turning them on to see which one I need. So this one I won't use. I'll just ignore it. This one I will use probably. This one I can leave it on. And maybe that one. Okay, so let's turn on a sky pass for now and put uh, color correction, maybe decrease the gain, so it's a little bit darker, and let's see what we can do with color. I'm using very saturated color right now, it kind of makes it a little bit more interesting, but I don't need to do that, you know, to keep it a little bit more realistic, I'll probably like push that uh, green for the background uh, and desaturated. So let's try to find, yeah, maybe something like that. And then what you can do over here right now is, uh, so if I go to shadows, I can start playing with individual RGB uh, components you know, to get something that looks like some old uh, film something like that for example so let's turn some other passes on this one I will use but let's put a color correction and lower it to right, so this is uh, zero maybe point 0.1 and if I push push saturation a little bit to a lower value and let's see if we can play with the tint a little bit so maybe increase that gain so what I'll do is I'll, link, I'll increase the gain to point 0.3 but then on merge node I will create a mask which is I can add a polyline mask and I can mask only that area that's hitting the main sphere. Okay. And then I'll show that mask, so drag and drop, soft edge, just to blur it a little bit and then go back to that guy. So this is without that uh, that light group, and then this is with that light group. I'll probably let me lower it even more. So that uh, mask, basically, what it's doing, if I ignore it, then it will add that light on the that background machine, and then if I turn it on, then it will ignore it for the background machine. 
what I can also do right now just uh, maybe to get rid of some of that noise is I can uh, go to tools blur and that uh, very blur and I'll plug custom mask into that arrow input so let's create another mask and then let's select that area over here and we can adjust it so it fits perfectly with that background okay something like that and then I'll apply just a little bit of that soft edge to make it blurry and I won't plug that as a mask to that variation blur I'll plug it in that green arrow and as you can see now I can control the amount of blur for that background this is not the ideal solution for for blurring that background in most of the cases maybe I would rather use a a Z depth pass and then blur it based on the Z depth pass, but in, in this case, I think it works relatively okay. And I can add another polygon and I can select just this area over here. Something like that. And then a soft edge. see that again okay, that looks fine for now so this was basically and let's bring back actually let's bring that loader and bring a second camera and I'll copy this part and plug in that beauty pass so that's the original render and this is the one that we just did what I also do in the end is uh, uh, in tools I go to transform and I transform mode and I can flip it horizontally just to see how it works from the when it's flipped horizontal. So if I want to add some like a final color corrections for the complete image and not like these individual passes what I'll go is uh, go to where I'm doing that conversion in, from Blender to sRGB space and then I'll add maybe another color correction let's decrease gamma for this one and gain and then let's add a mask so I'll stretch it a little bit and then soft edge and inversion so this will darken those uh, edges a little bit it's called uh, vignetting and then uh, let's add another color correction and then for this color correction I'll select maybe part of that face something like that and then show it over here blur that mask Go back to that color corrector and maybe just slightly raise the gamma and gain so that will bring that focus back to let's say a face of that uh, foreground machine so I can try maybe to like go even like with higher number but then like sometimes if I go like extremely high then that uh, edge of that mask will be become visible so maybe we'll have to just blur it a little bit more something like that we don't need to stop over here basically we can like start adding more color corrections so maybe I can now add, add one for that uh, background Let's blur it a little bit. Show it in viewport and then let's see if I can start pushing that towards some other color.
green looked relatively good so maybe we can keep it over there but maybe just a little bit towards blue and let's play with uh, gamma that's too much maybe a gain actually having a higher gain is actually it's, it works a little bit better because it's uh, I think it carves out that uh, form of that foreground shape a little bit more so gain one point let's try something higher one uh, one point two was okay and let's go to shadows green channel let's try to play with that to decrease the contrast for the green okay and then I can go back to uh, soft glow you can see how that soft glow is adding a little bit of that glow on the, these areas where the specular is high strong and sharpen maybe in this case I can increase the sharpen to 0.2 and that's it we have a completely different version of that uh, uh, second camera that we just did in the post in maybe like 10-15 minutes and if I want to experiment with this a little bit more what I can do is I can select this, this whole like uh, comp and then I can paste it again and I'll just bring it over here and then show the final result something is probably missing yeah that variation blur is okay let's turn it off for now and then I can uh, start turning on some other passes just to see which ones I can use so maybe like I don't I'm not gonna use like this pass over here for now and even like this one I don't need this one maybe we can turn off and let's put a color correction on that one over there and push it more towards red Okay, so and let's try to increase the gamma. Let's try some other colors. It looks like that pass is not working that great, so maybe we can reduce the amount of plants to some lower value. And let's see, uh, this one we already used. This one we can keep, but maybe also push it towards green. And let's play with that uh, color correction for the sky pass. Maybe reduce the gain a little bit. Gamma settings and then let's see what we can do with the color. Let's go to uh, let's say a shadow pass to blue and then play with contrast a little bit. Okay, yeah that, that looks nice. And then for this one over here, maybe we can try to use some other color. Okay. So that uh, blur node. Let's see what we can do with that. Maybe I can plug in another one. So let's uh, just bring a box, plug it over here. Bring it 
the left side and then increase the soft edge. So we have this version, this is the previous one and this is the new one. What I can also do is I bring a background which I will pick some color let's say blue and then based on that uh, rectangle mask I can create another merge node merge that background and then I use that mask and then for the intensity I'll just reduce that to very small amount something like that maybe it does look kind of fake so I'm not sure like that I, I should save this one as the one of the variations for the final color correction but I'll surely like keep uh, this one over here so that's basically how I set up all the render light groups and we save that as EXR file and then you know you can bring it over here in Fusion and you have that flexibility basically to do experimentation in Fusion and see the instant updates because sometimes when you try to do all these variations in Max you always need to re-render the scene and that takes a while and for big scenes let's say if you're rendering 4K it can take up to like one hour while over here even like if I'm uh, doing compositing with 4K images um, all the color corrections that I'm doing are almost uh, instant updates so this is the end of uh, this section and hopefully now when we did a little bit of that uh, compositing uh, now I understand why I spend a little bit more time in 3D Studio Max setting up all those uh, light groups and how because we spend all, all that time setting up light groups that when we went into compositing that gave us that ability to explore different color corrections and different uh, light scenarios with only that one uh, beauty render basically.